Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of History Quest. This will be the first of a series of McLeod County Parks. We are here at William May Park. Today, we're going to learn a little history about William May as well as the park. So uh, thanks for watching and come along. Here we are at William May Park, uh, just down the road from Winstead, and uh, clearly it is dedicated to William May, our Civil War hero, and uh, we're here with Al Coglin. He's going to tell us a little bit about the park. Here you go, Al. Hello. Um, the park was purchased in 1968. Um, it was a 72.5-acre track that is mainly made up of, of hard maple trees. Uh, in 19... Uh, 84, a civic group from Winstead had asked McLeod County to rename the park William May Park. At that time, uh, William May, they had found out William May was a, a Medal of Honor winner during the Civil War, and he, when he came back from the war, he had purchased this tract of land. Uh, in September of the following year of 1985, we renamed the park in a dedication ceremony to William May County Park, and then also dedicated this stone uh, to William May. Um, a couple of features about the park is that the park is considered a day park, which does not allow camping. It's a nature area, which we don't do a lot of uh, development to the park. Um, it has a picnic shelter, walking trails, it has cross-country trails, and another feature is we allow some civic groups to come in and uh, do maple syrup tapping so they can show like the school groups, church groups, 4-H groups how you actually tap a tree to get maple syrup out of it. And one of the most nicest features of this park comes in September, October, early November when the trees turn colors. There is no better place to be driving by is William May Park. Uh, just a small tidbit, since the late 70s, early 80s, the Parks Department has been taking sapling maple trees out of this park and replanting them in other parks. So if in any of the parks that you drive through or walk through and you see a maple tree, it probably came from here. Here we are, deep in the woods at William May Park. We decided we are going to take a little walk down the trail since the uh, mosquitoes aren't all that bad this year. Uh, looks like a fairly nice trail, a little wet from the rains we had recently, but uh, we're going to go for a little walk anyway and see what kind of adventures we can find. We're here today in Winstead, Minnesota at Veterans Memorial with Chip Gugamus and he's going to tell us a little bit about a Civil War hero named William May. I'm really glad you asked about William May. Uh, we have a Medal of Honor recipient in this town. He's not from Winstead. He was born in Pennsylvania, moved to Indiana, um, and was mustered up for uh, the uh, Mexican-American War, as you can see here. William May served in the Mexican-American War. And he was mustered out, he married a gal from Indiana, and they promptly moved to Iowa. Uh, over the next 22 years, they had eight kids, and he was mustered again at age 36 for the Civil War. Uh, what impresses me most is he's volunteered twice 
he, he wasn't drafted, he was volunteered, or he volunteered. And um, that impresses me in this day and age um, of so many that, that uh, answered the call to serve, twice in his case. Uh, he served uh, from Iowa with the uh, 32nd Iowa uh, Infantry Regiment and uh, deployed into the South. Uh, but his, his great uh, claim to fame was his actions in the middle of December 1864 at the Battle of Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville had been held since the beginning of the war by the Union. And uh, the Union commander, uh, General Thomas, uh, Rock of the Chickamauga, as he was known, uh, had 55,000 troops in his favor. And coming up from Atlanta, where he failed to hold Atlanta, was a fellow named General Hood. Uh, you might recognize Fort Hood, Texas, being named for him. And he was trying to save face. He's trying to distract uh, the Union, uh, uh, bringing General Sherman and his attack through Georgia um, and distract uh, that whole effort by taking a shot at Nashville, uh, but with only about 33,000 troops. And you don't want fewer troops if you're attacking, you want more. Uh, General Hood's efforts failed in those two days. And on the second day, William May played a very key role uh, as an infantryman crossing the open field with his unit. Uh, they, started to, they started to waver, taking a, an artillery battalion or an artillery battery. Uh, imagine artillery fire being directed directly at you uh, when you're advancing. And uh, the Union troops started to waver, and William May took it upon himself to charge the battery, uh, cross over the barriers, and capture the battery's flag, which sounds crazy to risk your life to do that. Uh, but in that day and age, it was more than just a spree de corps. Capturing a unit's flag uh, was also a means of capturing the unit's very identity. A field commander wouldn't be able to tell for sure what battery that is if he doesn't have a flag to look at through his field glasses. So William May captured the flag, announced, quote, the flag is ours, and rallied the troops uh, to take the battery, which shut down that battery on the right flank and allowed the Union advance to continue. And ultimately, those troops ran away. The, the, the Confederate troops basically hauled all the way down to Louisiana, um, and um, they were decimated. They were, de they were never again uh, a useful unit. Uh, that uh, Battle of Nashville was one of the last great battles of the Civil War and really solidified the Union's uh, likelihood of winning this thing, and hopefully in, in short order. Um, and so May played a real key, key role in that battle, uh, helped turn the tide, uh, for which he was awarded the, uh, the Medal of Honor uh, about a year later in February of uh, 1865. Um, he went to Washington with other uh, Medal of Honor recipients that captured Confederate flags, and um, was awarded the Medal of Honor by Secretary of War um, Edward Stanton. Um, this is only about a month and a half before the Lincoln assassination. Uh, so I, I imagine what that was like for him to hear about Lincoln's assassination. And he was just in Washington and met one of the key members of, of the government, uh, uh, Edward Stanton. After the war, he moved up to Minnesota. That's not the end of the story. He moved up to Minnesota because he heard good things while he was in the Civil War about Minnesota's uh, tillable land, uh, the lakes, and the fishing, et cetera. And so he moved his family up here, settled in Winstead, um, and had the rest of his life here. Um, many of the titles for property in town have William May's signature as one of the first owners. Um, and he's buried in our local public cemetery here in Winstead with a gravestone that does indicate uh, his Medal of Honor um, uh, on the stone. Do you, how much do you know about the, the medal itself, um, that the acts? that it takes to receive a medal. Right, well today it's very well defined of course and uh, even today sometimes, e e like literally as we speak, there are awards from 10 years ago, 15 years ago um, over in the Middle East uh, that are being reevaluated whether or not this should be elevated to a Medal of Honor. Um, at that time I don't think it was as well defined. Uh, we've heard of the Silver, Silver Star, that's a separate medal now for valor. It's the lowest medal for valor in combat. At that time in the Civil War, it was just, I, I understand, an accoutrement. You would, you would pin a silver star on perhaps a Purple Heart um, to indicate valor. Uh, now it's a whole separate award. Uh, and in between the Silver Star and the Medal of Honor is the, uh, for the Army, the uh, Distinguished Service Medal for the Navy, the Navy Cross, Marine Corps Navy Cross, and the Air Force, the Air Force Distinct Distinguished Service Medal, or Cross, rather. And so there's really three medals of valor uh, the Medal of Honor being the highest. Um, at that time, there were fewer 
um, medals for valor and, and fewer medals in general. And that's not to take away anything from the, the men and I think one woman in the Civil War that won the Medal of Honor. Um, but it is different now. It's probably a little harder to get it now. Uh, but we're very proud of, of um, Private May's um, heroism and courage and very pleased that he chose to settle here in Winstead and live the rest of his days here. So while we're here, we're going to take a real quick tour of the uh, Veterans Memorial. And uh, Chip here actually had a big hand in getting this done. So uh, actually, you just want to give us a little tour. You can take the mic and uh, we'll follow you. Sure, I will. Well, the Winston Veterans Memorial really started when Dave Gailey, a local Navy vet, had the idea that we should have a memorial. And he got a couple of guys together that were veterans from Winston and the surrounding community back in 2017. And although we had great, great um, hopes and uh, passion for it, we didn't really have the right leader. Uh, many of us were um, working and just couldn't take it on. Uh, the following year, we got re-energized again, and we found the right leader in a local veteran, uh, Dick Langenfeld. Uh, Dick is at the heart of uh, Winstock Country Music Festival and uh, just has a career in sales and knows how to get things done. So uh, with Dick as our leader, uh, we approached the city formally and got a commitment from the city for this land on which we could build this park. And at the end of the construction, we would turn the keys over to the city again. So the next step was to find a designer. And uh, we talked to a few and we found one right here in Winstead, Mitch Litvin of Litvin uh, design, he uh, designs homes, uh, came up with this amazing design. Uh, it's not just my opinion. Everyone who seems to stop here seems to think this is just an incredible layout. Uh, the committee had a few things for Mitch to consider. We wanted up front and center uh, our, 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 our lost, our, our killed in action, or those that died in service to their country. So we have 13 biographies that surround our flagpole, uh, putting up front that uh, those men that uh, made that ultimate sacrifice. Also in that flag circle, which we'll see in a second, is a memorial uh, in recognition of our Medal of Honor winner who settled in Winstead after the Civil War, William May. We continue down through a colonnade uh, representing the five service branches with quotes and the service logos of the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines, and the Coast Guard. And that spills on to a second Pentagon-shaped patio uh, where we have five pillars with names, um, with uh, mostly people from Winstead that served. Uh, some are family members and relatives um, uh, near and dear to us here in Winstead. And anyone's available to do that for a $150 donation. But none of this was possible, none of it was possible without our sponsors who we have right up front. Sponsors are recognized both for cash donations and in-kind donations. Some of them are corporations that helped with landscaping, helped with our stainless uh, donation of lumber, time, etc. We are overwhelmed with the generosity and uh, we are well situated. Not only is the memorial entirely paid for, uh, but we are well situated to be able to pay maintenance and operations um, uh, for 15 plus years, which is uh, the agreement with the city of Winstead. Our flags, we have of course the US flag, the Minnesota state flag, the missing in action KIA flag, and then we have on either side as you enter the VFW flag and the American Legion flag as two organizations that helped us greatly in getting this done. Around the flagpole, we selected statues uh, representing the different services. We have a female GI. It's not descript whether she's Army or Marines or Air Force, but definitely more modern uh, given the equipment she has. We move over to an Air Force pilot, a Navy seaman, a Vietnam era soldier, and then lastly here, a Marine in his blues. And around our flag again are our biographies of Winstead's 13 lost, but not forgotten. We work very hard on these biographies and we encourage everyone who stops by to take time to read them. There's some excellent information. And William May did not pay the ultimate price. Uh, thankfully, he came back to Iowa and moved up to Minnesota and specifically Winstead to raise the, uh, his family and ultimately passed away here. 
But of course, when you win a Medal of Honor, you deserve some attention here at the center of the memorial. The colonnade emphasizes the um, characteristics of military service, duty, honor, country, valor, and courage. On the right-hand side, as you walk down, we have the emblems of the service branches, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. And then we selected from history opposite quotes. We try to keep the Navy quotes largely with the Navy side and Air Force quotes with the Army Air Corps or Air Force side. Trying to keep a theme for each colonnade. I'm perhaps most proud of this one here with Luke Otto, who's a local man. He's not a president, he's not an author, he's just a local man. But he's a local man that served with the Marine Corps as an infantryman through the, almost the entire Pacific theater. And locally is our own hero. This Pentagon court with the five pillars continues that theme of five. And families and veterans were encouraged to make a donation for $150 get their veteran's name engraved on a plaque. We elected not to include any kind of rank, any academic degrees. We elected not to use periods of service, or rather, rather time frames, dates, because many families honestly aren't sure of the dates of their loved one's service. You don't need to be um, deceased to get a plaque here. You don't need to be active duty. Any branch of service, any period of service, living or deceased, peacetime, wartime, are welcome. We just ask that they have gotten, if they have left the service, that they've gotten an honorable discharge. This is all centered on the what we call the Leave No Man Behind statue, which is emblematic of any service member's devotion to his comrades, who we recognize in this court. We are still collecting uh, donations uh, via the purchase of plaques or sponsorships. Uh, this is not over. We even have plans to expand if uh, the number of plates uh, need more walls to uh, be placed on. A local veteran, a Vietnam veteran, Mike Nathy, gave us this idea. When he saw this being built, he said, what you need up here as you walk out are the words never forget. And that just was too perfect. So of course we added that. And I, we think this is a memorial you can come to. Uh, it'll change in time with added names. Uh, I think it's a memorial you can come to and learn something each time by reading the biographies and the names. And uh, we're really just pleased as punch as to uh, the design itself. We think it's a beautiful design and the generosity of the uh, community in supporting this effort. Thank you very much for giving us some time today, Chip. Uh, this is this memorial is great. Uh, you're you're a great military historian for the town, and uh, I think Winstead's lucky to have you. Well, thank you. All right, thanks again. Take care, bye. Yep, you too. So here we are at Winstead Public Cemetery concluding our tour today at the final resting place of one of the Union Civil War heroes, William May. Anybody who is interested in the Veterans Memorial or just in visiting the gravesite, I highly recommend coming down here and taking a quick look. Thanks everybody for watching another episode of History Quest. Uh, just a little side note, this is actually the first in a series that we're going to do on McLeod County Park, so I hope you enjoyed it, and if you do, stay tuned over the next few months because we plan on going to some more parks. Uh, in the meanwhile, we have decided to resume our Tuesday morning breakfast clubs. That is on the fourth Tuesday morning of each month at 10.30 a.m., and we either have a roundtable discussion or we have a, a guest speaker come in, so uh, don't, don't be afraid to stop on in. Um, if 
if you do come, you'll have to wear your face mask until we start eating our snacks, and you know, then you can take it off and just uh, enjoy the conversation. Uh, really, that's about all I have for you though this month. So uh, stay tuned, and thanks for watching.